What's good, guys? It's your chicken. <laughs> As a continuation to my part two video, if you haven't watched it, you really should. We're gonna talk about Amelia now. <laughs> Sorry, Echi Donut. And I know, I know, she's more of a deuteragonist. But do people know that word? It's for the title's sake, man. Please understand. Y'all already know. Watch the whole thing because the video is fire. And if the video gives you goosebumps, you have to like the video. By the way, if you like videos like this one, make sure to check out my channel because you just might find something you like. And subscribe because we're almost at 1,000 subscribers and that is crazy. And it'll be crazy if we hit it with this video. And as always, I hope you guys enjoy the video. Alrighty then, without further ado, let's get into the details of why Amelia is one of the best characters in anime. Amelia's character was introduced right in the first episode with Subaru in a very weird way. <laughs> when we start watching ReZero, we see everything from Subaru's point of view. In other words, it all seemed like cliche fantasy isekai stuff at first glance. After his encounter with the bandits in Felt, his first encounter with Amelia could tell us a lot about her character from first glance. Besides the, oh my god, wow, she's a, fa <laughs> she's a half hell fantasy. Wow! Impressions. Her design is mostly white with purple accents, going from the hair and eyes to the clothes she wears. Since most of her design is white, the most obvious interpretation we can get from this color is innocence and purity. While the purple accents can be inferred as royalty or to complement her personality, sympathy, compassion, and peace. As she and Young Su kept interacting for the first time, we get to know that she's a political candidate for the next ruler of Lugniga, which supports the royalty part of the purple. Later on, we see her and Subaru try to find a lost child's mother because she felt bad. And then, she calls herself Satala to Subaru to scare him away so he wouldn't be burdened with being involved in the selection, showing her sympathy for the first time. Like I've said a million times, colors really might seem like an obscure detail in hindsight, but since ReZero either has insane coincidences or the author actually puts thoughts into these parts of the character's design. So I talk about it. <laughs> we then learn that Amelia uses ice magic. In other words, she's an ice type and shows us that she's a pretty powerful character with her magic alone, being able to cause a lot of damage when she really tries to. And apparently, her magic is being held back, <laughs> not being able to use her True power. <laughs> Amelia then shows her relationships with her lesser spirits. And adding Puck into the picture, we understand that Amelia has some sort of connection with spirits prior to knowing the rules of the world we are seeing. Spirits in the world of ReZero are very interesting since there are many types of spirits that range from just tiny dots to cats and lollies. But we can understand that spirits don't just take a liking to anyone. Either they have a blessing like Julius or they're just Amelia. <laughs> we see how f***ing innocent she is to the point where she hasn't even reached the mental age to understand love. So romantically, She's super cold to Subaru. Since Amelia's personality is the definition of pure, it makes sense that spirits are drawn to someone with truly good intentions and help that person out. Something that we've been seeing since her past days as well. 
Amelia is a very weird person because of this innocence. She speaks in a weird way, saying stuff like "so" or "sugoku" and saying things that "quote unquote" nobody says anymore, almost like a kid. As well as reacting weirdly to the shit Subaru says, stuff like "EMT Victory." I'll get into why she's like that in just a bit. In addition, she is someone who easily trusts someone she believes in. The best example of this is Subaru and how she kept doing promises with him. With Subaru being a damn idiot back then, he didn't know how much promises meant to Amelia, hurting her in a way that couldn't be undone. Promises can seem superficial if they're not super important, but in Amelia's case, every single promise carries that weight. This emphasizes how immature she is in terms of overestimating people, not thinking about the ugly side they can have underneath them, only thinking about the positive, good intentions they might have. Speaking of good intentions, when we see this scene in the royal capital, with the other candidates stating their arguments for why they should be ruler, Amelia's statement literally had no ulterior motives behind them. Unlike people like Priscilla and Anastasia, she just wants a world free of racism and misjudgment of appearances, which she obviously suffers the most because of her being a silver-haired half-elf. If you think about it, from a different perspective, Amelia could be seen as the main protagonist of ReZero, and we're seeing everything through Subaru's eyes. Tell me what you guys think about this sick in the comments below. Amelia being born as a silver-haired half-elf was an immediate curse upon her because of the resemblance she has with Sotala, the Witch of Envy. Her different relationships with the characters really changes throughout the series. With her past, we really get to see what kind of person she was before everything just froze. How and why she is the way she is. So, let's talk about Amelia's past. To not repeat myself on what happened in her past trial, I'm going to mainly focus on Amelia's personality. Before anything though, we see how Etchy Donut <laughs> We see how Etchy Donut calls her the witch's daughter, which makes the viewer think she was referring to Satola, which isn't the case. <laughs> Y'all roasted me for this! <laughs> Amelia and Satala have a very, very interesting connection to each other. I mean, having the same voice actor and all? <laughs> it's something I'm really looking forward to see if there's something big between them waiting to be revealed. Anyways, her personality from the trial of the past really isn't different from what she's like in the present, at least throughout season 1 and part 1. Once again, She's the very definition of pure, but since she's a child, it's somewhat expected compared to when we see her grown up. We learn small details like her connection with spirits from a young age, to how she developed her connection with promises. Amelia has been a very good intentioned person from the very beginning, loving the people that took care of them even if they weren't their direct mother and father in this case being Fortuna. When Pandora appeared and Amelia was forced to run away, she began thinking it was all her fault for not behaving or for not staying in the room she was supposed to. This is a pretty common trait with people that are like Amelia, thinking that everything that doesn't go correctly is somehow their fault whether they do it on purpose or not. With this mindset, she really just said, it and came to the conclusion that everyone would be safe if she gave Pandora what she was looking for. We then see how Amelia is the key to opening up the seal. Apart from knowing she's an important character, I don't know if she's the only one who can open the seal or there are specific requirements to be able to see the key like she did. If you know, please tell me in the comments. Afterwards, she freezes everything and got her memories locked away and then woke up a century later thanks to a cat. Puck's true identity is still a mystery, but I personally believe that Puck is somehow related with Fortuna. The first thing Puck says when seeing her is, sorry I took so long to find you, which already raises a lot of questions. We see how f***ing wholesome Puck and Amelia's relationship is throughout these times, 
and how Puck was literally the only thing Amelia had at the time, basically being reborn completely anew without her memories. Amelia was again isolated from everyday society, living inside a frozen forest that she froze. Whenever villagers would approach, they would freak out and call her the witch of the forest. Even if she saves them from harm, the reaction she got was always the same. Fear and criticism. I feel so f***ing bad for Amelia, bro. She literally got reborn, and when she sees someone who's not Puck, she just gets flamed. Like, f*** the haters, fam. Like I mentioned before, Amelia was cursed the second she was born a silver-haired half-elf for this very reason, giving her the motivation to doubt herself in a lot of situations. Fast forward a little bit, Rossell encounters her and tells her that he wants her to participate in the royal selection, telling Amelia that he knows a way to unfreeze the forest by using the dragon's blood. Yada yada, Roswell, tome of wisdom, slave. <laughs> already know. So after this statement and his long ass fight with Puck, Amelia was given a heavy burden to carry, while again being very mentally immature. When Jungsu was summoned to Lugnica, Amelia was looking for her lost insignia, which already gave her a reason to feel insecure about herself. How can she protect anyone if she gets easily robbed? How can she rule a nation if she can't even keep an insignia? Insecurities began to rise, and even more with Suru's arrival. Before getting into this, let's talk about her present and future trial. Her present trial really shows how different her life would have been if Pandora didn't appear. Fortuna and Juice presumably are a thing, and Amelia was their daughter. Amelia witnessing this must have heard a lot, seeing how unfortunate everything turned out to be. Yet despite this, she thanks Echidna for showing her the scene. Echidna might have thought that she would have hated her, mocking her with showing something that could have been her life, but it all backfired on her. As for the future trial, we see hints of certain things that'll happen in the future, and the final scene where silhouettes of Subaru and Rem appear, and then she pops up in the dream castle. We see how instead of Echidna, Minerva appears behind her, telling her that she shouldn't look at her, being surprised that she was calm, despite seeing horrible possibilities that can happen in the future. To this, Amelia just says, yeah, if she was alone, she probably wouldn't be this calm, but they wouldn't let her be alone. <laughs> then there's hints everywhere that Minerva knows her mother, promising that she wouldn't say anything about her mother and stuff like that. Later on, saying that Echidna's evil plots do do good things sometimes, as she cried when Amelia said that Fortuna is her real mother. Hmm. I don't know about you, bro, but this bitch has to be her mother. <laughs> It'd be really interesting if he actually were, though. <laughs> All right, but seriously. With Amelia's character being extremely unfortunate on many different situations, let's talk about how this affects her mentality. This theme is a very prominent theme in her character, representing what it's like to be a victim of being misjudged by your peers. Despite this, Amelia refuses to give in to what people see her as <laughs> and remains good-hearted. The villagers and Amelia's relationship throughout this series is easily one of the most underrated, starting from as early as her OVA episode. Whenever civilians would glance at Amelia, she would always be judged instantly without even being able to breathe, bro. <laughs> She'd be just strolling by and out of nowhere, people would freak the f out. We can see how she's called a witch throughout the entire series by many different people, but the villagers in Erlem are slightly different. Yeah, they judge Amelia, but silently, even though it's just as bad holding back on directly insulting her. Probably because she's the royal candidate representing their village. Amelia had to take all of this negativity and just accept that these are her circumstances. She wants to help the villagers because of the ooh ooh girl she is. But the villagers can't help but keep their guards up whenever she's even mentioned. I'll talk about that in just a bit. As we know, 
throughout season one and the beginning of season two, Emilia seemed f***ing useless and Subaru kept being a humongous simp. Subaru just wanted to help Emilia in any possible way he could. And because he did literally everything, Emilia was not doing things by herself. But it isn't like Emilia wasn't aware of this. She might be pretty strong combat wise, but the reality was that she's constantly getting helped and saved by people like Subaru, Roswell, and Puck. Puck has been Emilia's biggest mentor and father figure, teaching her things she needs to know in order to be quote unquote normal. <laughs> What's that, right? Until she remembers her memories, of course. Without knowing, people, mostly Subaru, were making Emilia weaker and weaker, pampering and saving her to the point where she can't do it herself and return the favor when it really matters, as we see in part one with her trial. Saving her endless times, from literally since the beginning of the series, even if she never saw his failed attempts on doing so. We also see how Roswell relies on Amelia to be weak, never expecting her to do anything. Adding to everything else I added before, being clumsy, oblivious, and being hated with misjudgment. Amelia was aware of all of this, and that had given her many reasons to hate herself. Amelia's ugly side really shined when season 2 began. Although she gets a nice moment with Subaru as he wept for Ram in the beginning, her whole character starts to show a very vulnerable side later on. She was a person who needed to save the villagers stuck in sanctuary by clearing the trials, her being a demi-human and all, and needing to gain the villagers' trust by doing so. She was given a very heavy task to deal with without her knowing how difficult it would be. She went to where the villagers were staying and began telling them that she will free them, telling them that she knows they might not trust her, but she'll still try her best. The villagers began opening up to Amelia when she told them all of this, finally giving Amelia a tease of the sense of equality with her relationship with outsiders. And Ram is a very interesting character among Amelia's development and stuff. Since when Amelia finished talking to the villagers, Ram asks Subaru if he told her what to do and say, showing us how much Ram does not trust Amelia on doing things herself. With this new heavy burden of liberating the villagers, Amelia had to be confident before facing the trials, but afterwards, we see what becomes of her. Her multiple failed attempts at completing the first trial became something that she couldn't handle both mentally and physically. Even with Subaru's words of encouragement, that alone was not able to live the many thoughts going through her mind, doubting herself more and more, not believing what she was seeing, unable to show results, letting people down. Amelia began stockpiling all of the negativity upon herself to the point where it's not surprising if she actually hated herself. After her different second attempts, she goes crazy and even becomes Satala to a point? I'm still confused on this, but I'll talk about what I think later on. If it's a spoiler though, <laughs> don't say nothing. This destroyed her mentality, and with so many reasons to make your head spin, it's very understandable how she got crazy. Sure, this might be just because she had her memory sealed, but in my opinion, it's something more that Subaru was able to help her figure out, slowly being able to pick up her fallen pieces. When her memories were unlocked, a new path was open, something that Subaru was able to see a dim light. So with that being said, Let's talk about her character. <laughs> Amelia, Amelia, Amelia. You changed so damn much in part two. It's honestly ridiculous. And it all started with Subaru's conversation with her as she was hiding from everyone after Subaru, yet again, broke his promise. This episode really made Subaru's development shine though. 
showing a lot of maturity and transparency when talking to Amelia. It wasn't a typical, I love you, okay? I believe in you. You're perfect the way you are kind of thing. Subaru deliberately told Amelia straight up that she was a useless bitch. In a nice way, of course. <laughs> but at the same time, he was expressing his unconditional love towards her. That despite her being useless as f he loved her all the same. Amelia was having trust issues with Subaru, more so with him breaking his promise again. What the f man? The conversation seemed like an endless loop. Subaru saying, because I love you. And Amelia saying, you f***ing liar. If you watch my video dedicated to Subaru, then what I'm gonna say here is pretty obvious, my boys. This shit is realistic. <laughs> if you've ever had an argument with anyone, regardless of their gender, don't you always find yourself repeating the same shit over and over again? This conversation perfectly resembled what an argument looks like, like it's going nowhere. The OST made by Amelia's voice actor, <laughs> God bless Takahashi, made the scene even better, man. As cheesy as it sounds, love is unexplainable sometimes, man. When you love someone, you just love them without necessarily having a specific reason as to why. Amelia failed to understand why Subaru loved her, knowing that she hasn't been able to help him as much as he's helped her. Amelia kept trying to tell Subaru that she's not who he thinks she is, and kept insisting on it as she kept regaining her locked memories. He had no reason to love her. If anything, her unreliability just gives him more reason to hate her. But Subaru told her that it doesn't matter what happened in the past. As the person he respects the most said, it's not how it starts or what's in the middle, it's how it ends. He doesn't care what evil she's committed in the past because simp young Su aside, he just loved her. When you truly love someone, you love them for who they are not for what they've done, whether those things are good or bad. You love that person for being that person. When proven with a kiss, Emilia starts to truly look at Subaru as it's obviously shown in the shot of the reflection of her eyes. After this conversation, Emilia had a newfound motivation, something that gave her reason to become a better person. Like Subaru, she found the inspiration to become the dependable person she wanted to be. Someone like the person right in front of her, beginning to truly admire him. This conversation was Amelia's from zero. And I know I've said this damn sentence for a lot of the characters, but I can't put it in any better way. Self-love is such a big theme in ReZero, and it's great that it is. Our society really needs this kind of stuff these days. After I watched this episode, I just said, yep, this is my favorite anime of all time. Anyways, as she went to face her past with a new mentality, we see how she started to mimic Subaru's movements as she confronted Echidna. Echidna clearly hates Amelia, like, damn this bitch is jelly. To the point where she even f***ing cried, like damn. <laughs> I'm sorry for cheating on you, Echidona. Taking traits of people you admire and try to implement them on your life is one of the many ways to show your determination to change. We can see how Amelia, as Russell even points out, repeats Subaru. To put it simply, this is Amelia's own way to improve herself, to be able to become someone who's reliable and be able to help when it's truly needed, just the way she sees Subaru. When Amelia finished her past trial, she confronts Ram, who waits for her at the entrance. Ram immediately notices Amelia's change. And like I mentioned earlier, deep down, Ram didn't believe Amelia could do it. We can see how Ram looks at Amelia without a glow in her eye, while Amelia does. A small detail, but again, it adds up, bro. She immediately apologizes to her, even saying that it's the first time she's ever apologized and actually meant it. Ram has been a character who doesn't have the prettiest nature. She's cold and has very high standards when it comes to getting things done. She admits this and apologizes to Amelia. Ram asks Amelia to save Roswell from his delusions, and Amelia gladly accepts her newfound trust. 
Roswell appears, and y'all already know. So after she talks to him and goes on to take and finish the second trial, she encounters the villagers outside. Emilio immediately assumes that Subaru was the one who told them to be there to support her. But as she talks, they tell her that they went there out of their own will. This is such a touching scene, man. Since Amelia clearly can't believe that the villagers actually came to support her, not by Subaru's will, but out of their own will. It really shows her how it's possible to have people not hate her, not being compared to Sato. It's solid proof that the world she desires, free of any judgment, is possible. Very underrated scenes throughout the series. The villagers really do play a big role on Amelia's take on things, as she truly wants everyone to be treated equally. As we see her towards the end of season 2, looking at the scene in the mansion, she says that that scene is her ideal, a place free of discrimination. And Subaru says the same thing, although he looks at it in the way that the place is not a bloodbath. This really shows us how similar they are, but at the same time, being complete opposites. To add on to this, we see how Amelia still has that trait of trying to carry everything by herself, much like Subaru. And Subaru tells her that it's okay to rely on others when you need it. Man, I can really see myself in Amelia's character. Being the same personality type as her and all. Hell, I see myself in a lot of characters. One of the many reasons why I love this anime like a damn religion. Ah. And to begin ending off the video, I'm gonna talk about some symbolisms that are present throughout season 2. The first and obvious one is the second ending, Believe in You. Everything being black and white and still. Emilia's eyes being closed representing how disconnected from everything she is. Not having her memories or any real reason to fight. Her whole world was frozen. As the chorus comes in strongly and then I believe comes in after a drop ripples across the water, giving Amelia's world color as she finally opens her eyes as her world melted. <laughs> as f***ing cliche as that sounds. But get it? Melting because she's cold. This drop represents her conversation with Subaru making the movement she needed to be able to believe in herself. As Suru stands in front of her proudly, both smiling at each other. God, it's so f***ing good. And with the first ending as well, even though it's much more subtle, in a specific shot, there are three butterflies on a white rose. And these butterflies symbolize her three trials that she needs to overcome. And of course, the damn butterflies. Throughout the entirety of season 2, butterflies are present. Mostly the openings and endings, but as well as things like Echidna's accessory and Beatrice's eyes and ribbon. As I was thinking about it, the meaning that makes the most sense to me is the analogy of metamorphosis. Sure, people might think, oh, it's because of the butterfly effect and time, you know? But if you think about it, Metamorphosis makes more sense given the content we get in season 2. The majority of the characters being ugly and immature, but as they slowly face their past and surpass it in their own way, they start to spread their wings and become something strong and beautiful, just like what happens to butterflies. <sighs> so with this, Amelia easily became one of my favorite female characters of all time. And I really look forward to how she keeps developing later on in the series. So I hope I gave her the justice she deserves with this video. Tell me if I did in the comments below. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I had a lot of fun making it as always and I really really hope it shows. Before we get into the outro, I'm gonna talk about what I said I was gonna talk about when Sato appeared. So when I was re-watching clips again, I found something very interesting. All of this might be a huge coincidence, but I'm still gonna talk about it. So in the first episode, Subaru goes on and says this to the first Amelia who calls herself Satala. <laughs> And then when you see Sotola in season 2, it happens twice. 
check this out. This all might just be a coincidence. But knowing we zero, <laughs> I'm not sure about that, man. Before I made the script of this video, I was reading Arc 5 and certain things were being said and I was like, ah, let me finish the video first. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I love Amelia. But Beatrice is still my best girl. <laughs> no cap. If my simping for ReZero doesn't show in this video, maybe the other three will. Like I said in the beginning, like the video if you enjoyed it, and subscribe if you loved it. And comment down below the things that I asked you guys. <laughs> so with this video, I'll finally be able to read without being, I gotta keep talking about ARC 4. <laughs> And don't get me wrong, I love ReZero, but I obviously want to talk about a lot of other stuff. Stay tuned. <laughs> so as always guys, don't do dumb shit, stay safe, see you in the next one, and stay cringy.